Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu and I am here for Kimetsu no Yaiba's Swordsmith's Village Arc Finale, Episode 11, a two-parter, double-length, or 50-minute episode, where we are going to fight Hunt Hengu and probably kill him with Tanjiro's sword, which is why I drew that. That's what's happening. We are in the midst of yet another two-front battle. We've got the the squad sort of going off to, after tiny mini Han Tangu, and we've got a Hashira taking care of uh, Majin Go Tanks Han Tangu, which I have to shout out the exact person who actually gave me. I have to credit the person who 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 let that click in my mind. Remember how I was like, God, he reminds me of a of a DBZ character, and somebody nailed it. Aquil Kadri eight three seven one Go Tanks Majin Go Tanks. That's what he reminds me of, and uh, I I think that is the one. I think that's the it. So thank you for that. Well, yeah, she's taking care of him. We're taking care of the little guy. Seems reasonable. Seems like it's a straight shot. We get the backstory for the character. We find out about his shirking of responsibility and running away from his problems and maybe lying all the time and maybe not lying all the time and maybe being accused of things wrongly and maybe not. I don't know. Maybe it's a sad story that he lives and leads. Most of these characters, these demons, do have sad stories, a root core trauma or something de genuinely bad in their life that could totally destroy them, and in the case of the demons, actually does. It shatters them and makes them see that there's no way out except become a monster, and take all their problems out on everybody else, and cause lots of harm and destruction, and spread pain throughout the world. Which is kind of the exact opposite of what the also deeply traumatized, difficult having problems existing people who are all Hashiras and normal folks also have. Their families have all been murdered, their friends have all been exploded, their brothers got eaten by maggots and killed by a demon and died slowly in front of them as they as they also rotted. They've had those traumas too, and they all choose, mostly, or are brought via help and Kagaya and circumstances and, like, established um, institutions and stuff, are helped to go down the direction of not doing the spreading of pain and destruction and death and horror and murder and blood thing, and instead, you know, protecting the world and trying to prevent such horrible things that have caused them great trauma and despair in their pasts from happening to other people, like good people might, which is a good story. That's what's going down. What, uh, what could go wrong here? I feel like something's gonna go wrong here, because we haven't been able to do this without some sacrifice. Now, Tokito Muichiro did his thing, and he's super duper mega badass, and that's great. But he's over there right now. And unless he can get from over there to over here, we might have to sacrifice something. Who's it gonna be? Maybe Genya. <laughs> Maybe Genya. Maybe Boob Hashira, as some commenters have referred to Kanroji. I've said it before, you can't kill her. Sorry, it can't happen. There's no chance. <laughs> Zero shot. I'd be amazed if it did, but it won't. Sacrifices? Genya. He's just on the table. Also, various, um, normies from the village. Who cares, right? Not, not major characters. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we do get through this with a, a clean slate victory. But man, it feels so dangerous. It feels so, like such a dangerous game that we're playing. Like, we've had hundreds of years of no progress. No progress against the demons. And suddenly we start making serious inroads. And now we're catching momentum and really hitting our stride. We're trying to tackle two at once. On their terms. They came and attacked us. They know where we are. They could send reinforcements if they so desired. And that's one of the things that scares me. Because Akaza is fiending for a fight. And if he shows up in the middle of things, everything goes to shit. We might be able to handle these two. One now, Gyoko being gone, presumably, as long as he doesn't have some weird teleporting magic. We saw him turn into dust, I think that covers it. I think we can cover Hantengu as powerful, crazy, bullshit, mega boss, three stages, fucked up as he is. I think we can do it. Kanroji's got the main one dealt with. We've got the little one dealt with. We can probably do it. If Tanjiro can full flame on with some Nezuko flames and maybe a cool sword, maybe a cool new sword from Haganizuka, bring all that in, in together and stuff, I think we can do it. But if somebody else shows up, you know, like, 
the dude who the automaton that we trained against in the beginning of the arc happens to show up, we are, we'll find out really fast how lacking our training is. And that's the sort of circumstance that can get really scary. And I'm really excited to see if we do anything like that. At the same time, I'm also just excited if we could get a victory over another moon. If we could just do it and get that clean slate and get it done, that's going to be great. That'll be awesome. And it'll probably be full of incredible bombast and lots of fire. Great action. I expect good things out of this episode regardless. But I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm a little worried, honestly. Red Light District, the way we built toward the finale felt a certain way. It was like, it was so intense and desperate all the way through. We were so close to death and failure all the way through in the Red Light District arc. And that finale episode and those last couple of episodes, it's like, we're losing. We're losing, but I know because of the nature of the characters that they're going to pull it out. So how are they going to pull it out? And that's our core tension. We're in the opposite world right now. We're in opposite land. Everything is going well. That's not good. <laughs> I know that it, it doesn't make any sense because it's like, but everything's going well. Of course it's good. No. No. Not good. If in the circumstance where everything is going poorly, we pull it out by the skin of our teeth, then, logically, in the circumstance where everything's going great, we're going to lose. We're going to lose badly, and it's going to be unexpected. I don't know if that's an accurate prediction. I have no idea what's going to be happening in this episode. I'm a little bit worried. So, I've spieled my spiel, I've said my stuff. Let's go ahead and watch the finale episode of Kimetsu no Yaiba. Before we do, I have to take one moment to shout something else out. It's pretty simple and pretty straightforward. The show is ending. The show will go on. That is, Kimetsu no Yaiba is over, for now, until it isn't anymore. It, because they're gonna make more, duh. Uh, uh, yeah, Friday. Phyto Friday will be open. You might have some ideas of what things I might put on Phyto Friday. I am excited for this poll. Uh, let, let me tell you something. I am excited for this poll. I haven't totally ironed out exactly which shows I'm going to do yet. So there's still a chance for you. If you really need to get your show in, uh, uh, yell at me. Please put XYZ bibbidi bobbidi boop on the, on the poll. Probably it's already on there. Probably the one that you're thinking of, whichever one that is, it's probably already on there. If it's not, sorry, I'm going to miss some, but it's probably already there. This is going to be a weird mix. Everything on this poll is going to have action as a, a core feature of it. Um, the types of action will be varied. That is, there are different types of, of action in Sakuga and in insanity. You know, samurai action is pretty different from gunfight action. It's pretty different from cyber action. It's different from, like, all sorts of things, right? But the poll is coming. The poll is coming. And, uh, if you'd like to have an in, 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 any input on what we end up watching next on Fridays, you should head over to the Patreon, throw a dollar this way, and, uh, cast your vote. Cool! That's it. Let's see what happens at the end of the Swordsmith's Village arc of Kimetsu no Yaiba. Will we emerge victorious, flaming sword in hand? Or will we emerge victorious, flaming sword in hand, destroyed by a loss? <laughs> A mistake. A sacrifice. Will this again be us bloodied but unbowed? I don't know. Let's find out. So, Kimetsu no Yaiba. Finale episode. A Connected Bond, Daybreak and First Light. I do, I do have the title. I don't know what this means. I thought that it might have something to do with Mitsuri because she seems like a daybreaky type person to me. But maybe it's not that. Maybe it's something else. I don't know. The connection thing makes me wonder about the dots. Face dots. So that's the biggest weird thing that we've got so far. That's a big unanswered question. Face dots. The demons have them. The sly, sly airs also have them. What's up with that? Are they connected that way? What is that? What's going on here? And is, is there something that I'm missing in the naming because it's not in the Japanese where I would be like, oh, that's actually one of the characters' names because it might be. Like, a connected bond might be Mitsu or something like, oh, it's not, but it might be, it might be one of the characters' names. And it'd be like, oh, it's so obvious. 
I don't know. Hit me if it's super obvious, if I don't figure it out by the end of the episode. Otherwise, let's watch the episode. No early access anywhere, because this is the last one. I guess early access to the, the poll, and <laughs> whatever comes next. Check that out, it'll be on the Patreon. No picture-in-picture -picture versions, because we're not doing that for Kimetsu. Timer-based version. Beep beep timer, let's go. Yeah, give it the nom noms. And the fire blood. Yeah, and he's still, he's just off running again. Get him! Get him! <laughs> okay, and some- Yeah, stop running away from your problems. Yeah, 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 yeah. And somehow backstory. Sem samurai history backstory stuff? No, P? Oh, right, Genya's freaking. Oh, he- no, he picks up the- the tree. Everything's fine. Hunting them down and killing them? This is intense. <laughs> Looks great. He is getting mad. He's hitting all the you fucked with humans beats. Okay. Okay, Tanji boy. Get mad. Get fucking mad. Yeah, and then you then you fucking hold it against us. So self-centered. Okay. Oh my god, wow. That was cool. Let's go get ya. <laughs> Stay. Stay. Cut back to past. Okay. Good. Lots of organ. Very weird. Very weird thematically as an intro. I, I like it. Very intense. That was... I don't know what that was. <laughs> oh my god, two trees! He just is chucking trees. <laughs> <laughs> grab him just grab him god he's so fucking fast <laughs> it's all he can do it's all he's ever trained for you got a burst dude you got a bastel. Hit us hit the Nas, dude. Hit the Nas. Mm. We gotta last till daybreak. Yeah, he's lost one before. Akaza ran at daybreak. And this one's more of an escapee. Fuck. How do we get a new sword into Con into Tanjiro's hands? We're not gonna give up. Uh huh. Ah, yeah, that'll do it. 
Yeah, you're so crunched, man. Don't push too hard. What are you gonna do? Bro, he's gonna be able to do all the breathings? No! No way! No! The thing that I called earlier in the season? No! Okay, ignite the heart. Oh, you can plant your feet. Is he about to lightning breathe? Is he actually about to lightning breathe? He has no fucking idea what he's doing. No shitting way. Fuck off, Tanji boy. No. Bullshit. I'm not. I'm not mad, but bullshit. In the first minutes? Cut to backstory? No! Oh my god! Ha ha ha! Oh! Nezuko? The homies! Homies? He's so big! Mm. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Dude, he's still trying to cut his head. Oh my god, he's got all the powers. You are going to explode. Genya just took that to the face. That's what we needed. That's what we needed. Mm, indeed. He's not letting go, man. Okay. Don't you feel the least bit sorry? Oh, he's demon! Oh, shit! Help, help, help. Cut, cut, cut. He's still pushing. Let's go, Taji boy. Oh my god, he's just taking him with him. Oh my god. Oh, he's gone, he's gone, his eyes have gone blank. Okay, he's out of it. Tundra was on top. Oh my god! Yeah, pretty bad, man. Pop! I will escape no matter what! Yeah, it's pretty bad. And the light is coming. <gasps> Sharing, can he pull it back? You mean Tanjiro's flesh? Yummy. All he wants is to escape. Haganezuka? With a sword? Hey. You. Huh. Tanjiro? Tundra, are you in half? Yeah, be afraid, buddy. Be afraid, little buddy.
Is he about to run into, like, a squad? Like, oh. Uh-oh. They are not a squad. Uh, lucky for you, what if he gets a new sword? Which humans are those? They've got a bunch of swords. So they're they're running with the swords. They're fleeing. I see, I see. But they don't have one of the special ones. They don't have Haganazukas. Alright, he's down. He's alive. Hey, sis, can we power up or something? Can we combining, like, <laughs> fusion dance? No? Can you even? Dude, you're so shattered. You're gonna break yourself, man. Is that Zenitsu? Is that actually Zenitsu? Or is that little, little, little kiddo? Oh shit, sword! Ha <laughs> ha It's begun! Hiya! It's time. 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 Oh, that's why he throws it. Ah, the whole thing that I've asked the entire fucking side time. Ha! Huh? I wasn't done. <laughs> fucking deal. <laughs> we'll take it. We'll take it. <laughs> Boom! Lightning and a flaming sword. It needs the tuba, though. It needs the tuba. Doesn't he have it? Doesn't little kiddo have it? So we get to do the, the tsuba later as a, uh, uh, as a, like, leveling up and being worthy of it thing. When we get this sequence again, all the, all the slayers. Whoosh. Which means that all those hopes are in your hands. Whooshity whoosh, here we go! Oh, the lighting was so good there. This is new. <laughs> Hi! That's it. What happens to the other one? They're half and half. Is this over? I don't think it is. His whole deal is running away from his problems, including getting his head cut off in an execution. This is going to be something interesting. Maybe I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. God, I hope I'm wrong. But I don't trust it at all. And light comes. Nice. Nezuko! Oh my god, yeah, we're in a timing! I didn't even think of that. Holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. Boys, up top. Why is she running toward him? Why is she running toward him? He, there's something behind you, there's something behind you! No, there's something behind you, dog! And she's like, you're gonna die, cause something! Tanjiro! Trust your sister, too! Turn around! Is he big? Oh my god! What the fuck? Okay, still Nezuko, go! Get in the shade somewhere! 
Its head is not vaporizing. So then where is the main body? What happened? When did the swap occur? The light spreads across. Whoosh! Yeah, you choose to protect your sister first. Okay. Do we lose Nezuko here? Caught. Stuck. Protect who? Dude, there's no way. It's not! He's gonna turn and leave Nezuko. Also self-centered. Man, that is fucking pain! Oh, holy shit! She's gonna make up your mind for you, dude. Yep. Thought so. Fucking hell! We lose Nezuko here? Actually? What a beat. What an absolutely stunning beat. Choice made. Oh, my God. Damn, so long ago. Oh, my God. It's only half well. What the fuck? Can we bait and switch this? Can we can we capture a seed of her so that she can regrow or something? Cause she's like the, um, she is actually the emotional core of the story. See, I said we don't get out with, without sacrifices, but I did not think this was on the table. This does not, I, this does not compute as being on the table. 
This shouldn't be allowed. Ha <laughs> ha That is daring. That is daring if we do it. It's not done yet. Oh, but I don't know. If we have our cake and eat it too and we get this sadness and we take it away, that becomes really thin. Oh no, this is legit. Oh my god, this is legit. That's why we're spending all this time. It's like we have the time for this to sink in. Yeah, her eyes close. Happily. He has to turn and run with no looking back. Right? The thread. Motherfucker, time to die. <laughs> Hidden inside? Right where you are. Right at the heart, huh? Yeah, but... You! In the midair, get him! Get him! Flashback? Hmm. Hmm? It's not me, it's my hands? What? Oh, so they cut your hands off. Oh. No, memories. So he killed to cover himself. But no blame, no blame ever on me. And crazy, crazy, it couldn't have been me. <laughs> That's today. That's today. Am I dying? Finally! Finally. Puff? Dust? Dusty Puff? Thank God! Nezuko, please, something, something, some shred of hope. 
A shred of hope. A shred of hope, please. A shred of hope. That's all I need. It's the whole 30 minutes. Come on. Y'all got 27 minutes to give me a shred of hope. Or I'm I'm leaving. I'm out. <laughs> or I'm gone. Fuck this. Oh my god. Yeah, backward. Oh, I can't even get there. He thinks it's over, right? He he thinks he's lost her completely, and that's that's where we can do something fun here. Right. That's where we can do something fun here. There are people back there. What if it's Conroji? Like, Conroji could, could save something. What's moving toward you? You motherfuckers. Eh? What? Is she able to sunlight? Wait, is she actually able to be out in the light? No. Alright, who's walking up behind us? What if sunlight does turn them back into humans? No. Hey bro, you might wanna you might wanna turn around and look. Is she a human? She's human. The sunlight burns away their demonness? Hers at least. It does. So the entire time, all of the fleeing from the sun that they've been doing is actually bullshit? It's actually bullshit. They could just go out into the sun? And they'd actually be healed of their bullshit. What? Unless there's something particular going- WHAT?! WHAT?! Alright! Okay! That's better than having your cake and eating it too! That's interesting! Never mind. Oh my god, she can speak! And she explodes. <laughs> the fuck? Do you still have blood powers, babe? My love, can you still become tiny and big and explode things? What the fuck? I... My legs don't work, sorry. That's what's going on here. Uh, hi, I'm still watching. Still here, what's up? What the fuck? She's still got teeth! What are you? What are you? And then she explodes. What the fuck? Yeah! I was gonna what? <laughs> me too. They got- okay, they got me with that. This is the cleverest way that this could have gone. I'm pretty impressed. I'm pretty impressed. Oh my god. Pat, pat. Pat, 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 pat. Holy shit. Alright, let's get that boy a, a, tu a, fl a fire tuba and some respect. Uh, there's another episode worth! Is this all just the celebration on Alderaan? Is that what what's left? That's what's left, right? 20 minutes of Alderaan celebration? Or do we flip to the the, the fortress and have Muzan be like, <gasps> "Why?" <laughs> yeah, he lightning breathed twice. What the fuck? What an insane ending already. How's Conroji doing? What happened over there? Did it just fall apart? Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to know. Pretty close. <laughs> yep.
Yummy. Whoosh. Oh. Awkward. <laughs> hmm. In the nick of time, Tanjiro. In the nick of time! God, we almost lost all the waifus. Can you imagine this show going on without either of the waifus? We'd have only Butterfly Girl and she doesn't talk. Holy shit, fucking tit monkeys. He's gonna be so mad! He's gonna eat your face. He's gonna eat your face. And he's just, oh my god, he's gonna eat you. <laughs> it doesn't exist! He's done with this disguise, he's done with this bullshit. <gasps> oh, he found it! It's her that he found. Oh wow, he's pleased! Ha! <laughs> hey? Ah, beautiful. Finally. Weird? That's very strange. Ha 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 ha, what? Ah. <sighs> <laughs> Unwillingly, he doesn't like demons. <laughs> he doesn't actually like demons. He's going even beefier than usual. I'll have that power. Wow, he builds his own clothing. Thup. Yeah, quiet. Quiet, please. Jeez. God. Not while I'm gloating. Not while I'm gloating. Come on. God, what a fly outfit. Little button things. <laughs> oh, more. Moto, moto. How he became a demon? For much longer. No belief. So, what then? And just like Kageya, huh? Wow, alright! Sheer hatred. Oh, he's gonna just try to kill him. Holy shit. Oh! <laughs> just snap too! Oh my god, dude! Mix some blood in the medicine? Yummy! So he took it with the blood in it. Oh. But you burn in the sun. What the fuck? And he doesn't know what the medicine is, does he? Whoa. 
But are you sure? But are you sure? What if they're all wrong the whole time? Blood. Yeah. Oh. Easy peasy. And it begins. And then his power grows. Come at me, snack. <laughs> what a cool spot coloring. What a cool use of spot coloring. So we use this period for Muzon setup. But still the sun. It's really cars. He's just cars. He's actually cars. So what's the deal with Kaguya and family? Hmm, couldn't find the flower itself. So he killed his only chance. Whoa. Nothing, nothing, nothing. But again, all based on the fear. Not sure, right? And now I've found her, the chosen one. I don't need any of them, it's all me. And kill all living beings. Including my own, right? Wow. Ah, literally cars! Literally cars. Alright, I will put the redstone of Aja into my face! No! My leg is shattered. But my sister's okay, so... Sup, bro? Thanks for the sword. That was really helpful. I got my memories. They're both gonna pass out. You're weird. <laughs> uh oh. You used the sword. <gasps> <laughs> Dude, I killed a demon. Dude, 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 dude. Dude, I killed a demon. It's great. <laughs> Katsu win. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? It's right there. Oh, okay! The tone just explodes. Oh, there she is! God, I'm still rocked. I'm still absolutely rocked by the whole Nezuko give-take, push-pull, uh, bait-switch. Fuck a duck, man! That- I took a year off of my life today! 
<laughs> yeah. It's weird. Pretty great. Yeah, I know. Still got demon powers, maybe? I don't know! You burn away the shell. There's something about that, man. I wonder. I wonder. Alright, everybody's going. Ooh, baby. Do we get research back? Info. Wait, really? We can save them? She's a retrovirus. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. That being Tanjiro, perhaps? Wow. Sweet. Good kitty. So cool. Animal Messenger. Great spell. <laughs> it's actually not a great spell. Hmm. Oh, interesting that you would predict that immediately after it's actually happened. Very timely of you. Almost like you were written by the same author as the one writing the thing that's happening. Hmm. How very convenient. Okay. And we, we put our attention to rebuilding. Is there gonna be another twist? Is there gonna be another twist? I hope not. Is she in the box? <laughs> mm hmm. Dude. I mean, true, but uh, always, always. Speaking of that cool sword. Fox. <laughs> Not a demon! Mostly, it's still a demon. Can go outside. Can talk. Aw, oh, so good. Oop. Oh. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> uh, well. Uh, 
<laughs> What's his fault? He didn't break anything. And you would have never found the sword in the first place, you dingus. Something a little bit more heartfelt, and also here's your sword. What do you mean, reforge it? What? Wait, you mean the other one? <laughs> shut the fuck up! Shut 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 up! He's gonna kill you! Shut up! He really needs like a sit down with HR. <laughs> Can't keep treating people this way, man. Really toxic environment. Tsuba? No Tsuba thing. Kong. And we're off! We're out of here! It's Ogre! And off we go. Holy crap, two pillars down. I mean, two moons down. And we stopped. Actually, I'm a murderer. Wait, what? You're allowed to know where it is now? What is this? Aww, it's just a surprise party? That's cute. Do the big rotating shot. Nice! Nice! That is Alderaan. Yeah, this does it. Fireworks! Woo, we did it! The instant face change, no. No, 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 no. Fun! Fun. Am I allowed to just be in shock? Can I just be in shock? I don't want to talk about this. I'm done. <laughs> no, I'm, I can't, I can't. I've got to talk about it, but it's going to be pretty short. Wow. This looks like long ED. It's going to be these pushing past. I'll let it play. I guess I always do.
Okay, so it does hit the second... Second verse. Ah, uh, what a good scene. <sighs> I kind of wish that it was the I Call the Elemental Name of Love song. But this fits. Still much to, much to experience here, and his sword is all red. Sunrise with Nezuko. Good finish. That should be the last one. Or maybe the second to last one. And there's a little spiel at the end. Might be a Taishu secret, or maybe just a catch us next season sort of thing. What a great scene. Yeah, we're going to start the discussion with an overview of the arc. Aww. Fiend. Fiend! We're finished with the Swordsmith Village arc of Kimetsu no Yaiba. Let me pull up that pretty, that pretty frame of Nezuko, because that's a good stop. It's a good place to, 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 to think to leave up as we, as we talk about what happened in the episode, eh? First... Let's talk about the whole of the thing for a second, because I've got some impressions about it coming out of this last episode that are different from the impressions that I had during the actual flow of the arc. This arc was the least easy to watch of the Demon Slayer arcs. That is, there was the most wrong with it, and the most, um, like, the, it had the most low points. Easily. Um, there are stretches of episodes that are just not great. They, they don't knock it out. Specifically, the bird episode really just feels bland. And a bunch of the episodes feel like they're sort of expanded to fit time or weirdly placed to, to fit the arc in. It doesn't quite work as a cohesive story altogether. But then, but then, here at the end, looking back, it's got some of the more thematically resonant and potent moments in it for the entirety of the Demon Slayer story. It hits some of these beats that we've talked about repeatedly, and so I'm not going to go through and rehash them, but I will say that in context, looking back, I have a much fonder opinion of them than I did when going through them. Even as I was praising the parts of the show that I enjoyed, like the interaction, for example, between little mans blowing bubbles in to, to save Tokito, I praise those interactions when they happen because they're, they're thematically resonant and, and relevant and they make sense. The core story beat between Muichiro and Tanjiro, which is a huge conflict over the course of the, the thing. Uh, uh, Kanroji is mostly static throughout the, ep the, the, the arc, but Tokito and Tanjiro change each other. And specifically, Tanjiro changes Tokito big time, but he also changes Kotetsukun and, and also changes things in the village. And the way that that works out, the, the principles or ideals that are represented by it, and then the story that's told about those ideals and bringing them back in and bringing them back together, the idea that doing things for other people is worthwhile even when it doesn't seem like it, the really quite pitch-perfect 
opposite attitude of the two demons in this arc, where we've got Gyoko, who's entirely self-centered and entirely focused on his own creations and being focused on being looked at, where Tanjiro and Tokito kind of push that away from themselves in a lot of ways, and Hantengu, who's all about running away from and not taking responsibility for anything, where Muichiro is moving toward figuring out what he's responsible for. Like, who am I is a question of, what in my life am I actually responsible for? And the answer that he comes to is, all of it. I'm responsible for all of it, and he accepts all of it and becomes his unshakable true self in the process. That's di diametrically opposed to Han Tengu's continuously running away from his own self and his own, his own movements, to the extent that he says, it wasn't me, it was these hands, they're not me. Ridiculous, ridiculous. But it's actually exactly the kind of thing when you when you get interviews with real fucked up people, really fucked up people, they go in exactly this direction. It's like, what are you talking about? I didn't do anything. It was the urge. It was the demons. They took over my body and made me kill seven people and whatever, right? Like, yeah, the demons, man. No, no. And so the story comes at us and it says... All of us have those demons to wrestle with. All of us have those responsibilities to deal with. All of us have the opportunities to cast our bread upon the waters, regardless of whether it shall come back to us. And all of us make our choices. And the choices that you make are the choices that determine whether you end up a demon or a slayer. Slayer! And maybe as we click into place this Nezuko element, because it is not exactly clear to us what is spectacularly different and interesting about Nezuko herself. What weird plant did she eat that made her this way? Is it her lineage? Is it that Tanjiro is a sun breather boy, son of sun breathers, and so is she? Is it because of all the charcoal she's eaten? Like, because they lived in a house where they made charcoal? I don't fucking know. But whatever it is, the fact that her going out in the sunlight and she does not burn... It's like, it's like Queen of Dragons, walk through flames and not be burned, Targaryen, right? But it raises a question, it's like, is she the only one? Or could many of them actually do that? Because that would be really interesting to me. We see Muzan sit there with the sunlight, he reaches out toward it, and he doesn't put his finger past the threshold. And he says inside his mind, I knew, I know that if I'm exposed to that sunlight, I'll die. I know it in my heart. Well, guess what? I knew it, too. And Tanjiro knew it, and Nezuko knew it, and it wasn't true. And it wasn't true. What if they're all wrong? This is probably not the actual thing that's going on. Probably not the actual thing that's going on. Probably Nezuko's super special because of reasons, and we'll find out what those are, and be able to, to help other people. Obviously, it already worked on the other demon guy, a little bit of Nezuko blood, a little bit of time, a little bit of, a, you know, a, a, a spa day, and the demon who got turned, partially turned by Muzan in the city is no longer, and is no longer under his, under his control, and can live with just a little bit of blood and stuff. Can you go out in the sunlight? I don't know. So probably it's not this, but man, what a cool idea. Just to throw out there... What if it was? It would fit so perfectly with the thematic and, and, and like, the, the thematic elements around all the demons. They are all so self-centered, so afraid, so deeply paranoid, so deeply, well, they think of themselves as superior beings, but then they're also terrified of all the things that might destroy them. And they see themselves as unshakably powerful and destructive and murderous they they take great pleasure in it and are arrogant right until the moment when a sword cuts off their neck it's like no chance it's gonna oh what weird and then even go like as his head is falling he's like i'm upside down this is weird this can't be happening that's not what's going on right oh god i'm turning into dust oh strange what if for a thousand years all of the demons have all been going oh my god if we go out into the sunlight we're all gonna die what if they were all wrong? <laughs> what if they were all just wrong? Right? What if being a demon isn't the worst thing in the world, actually? But it is if you take it and then avoid reality, and hide in the darkness, and consume lots of flesh. <laughs> you just leaned into the dark side, right? You just had somebody tell you, you're a bad person. You're like, you know what? I am a bad person. I'm gonna own that shit. I'm gonna own that shit. I'm the worst! I'm gonna go murder everybody! What? What?
Nah, it's probably not the case. They probably are full demons. They probably do need to eat flesh. They probably can't go in the sunlight. This goes different. I'm sure he's experimented. Muzan doesn't care about his underlings or, or, or others, so I'm sure he's thrown some of them out into the sunlight just to make sure. And we've seen others die because of it. Just, you know, makes sense. But what if? I don't know. I'm shocked that we didn't put the tuba on the sword. I'm shocked. Absolutely stunned. I'm totally not shocked that, that Muichiro throws the sword to him. I'm very glad of that, because it actually makes the OP make sense. Because it didn't, it didn't make any sense. <laughs> it's like, why is Muichiro holding Tanjiro's sword and throwing it? And the answer is, because he throws it to him at the end, and it's, it's necessary. And that also answers my question, how are we going to get that sword to Tanjiro? Pretty cool. So... I think the thematic elements of this arc end up being extremely strong. The story with Kotetsukun, the story beats with Muichiro and finding yourself, the way that plays off of Tanjiro, the joyous celebration at the end as everyone's like, "Wah!" And then we have to turn our attention to the most crucial thing in the episode, this episode, and that's the Nezuko bait and switch. I don't even know if I could call it a bait and switch, but it sure, it sure feels like one. It solidly convinced me, maybe I should be less gullible and whatnot, but this is one of the fun... Okay, actually, let's take a step back and use this as another opportunity to praise a simple show for its simple storytelling. Because in a complicated show that is frequently messing with you, okay? So if you're watching Copcraft or uh, Death Note and it's constantly messing with you, it's like, oh, something crazy happened. Oh, no, it didn't. It actually happened this way. And it's like, it's totally... It's, it's playing with the, your expectations all the way throughout. Or Great Pretender, where the whole show lies to you continuously all the way through and you expect it to. And so you end up in this mode where you're like, what's really going on? What could it actually be? Hmm, ha, hmm, hmm, and distrusting everything. But it's Kimetsu. It's just like, that is a demon. He is going to kill you. That is a good boy. He is going to be good. That is a good Nezuko. She is going to be good. That person got his head cut off. It's over, right? It's just like, it's, it's as straightforward as can be. So, when you do something that is not straightforward at all, <laughs> but seems very straightforward, like a similar to other death or loss sequences that we've had, a very dramatic sequence where pretty believably Tanjiro is placed between two impossible things, protecting the one person that he cares about most in the world, or following his own ideals and protecting those who are in need. Tanjiro cannot make the choice, and Nezuko makes it for him, because of course she does, because of course she does. Of course she does. She's aligned with his ideals. Self-sacrifice is something that every Demon Slayer will do, and she's a goddamn member, whether she knows it or not. Demon Slayers will always sacrifice themselves for the population, and so Nezuko sacrifices herself. She pushes Tanjiro off of her. And throughout that moment, we have the montage back throughout their past. We sell it so hard. The only thing about the whole thing that would make me suspect that it wasn't true is one that i didn't think narratively it was possible but that's quite possible because the narr narratives do stuff that i don't expect all the time all the time and it would be a shocking stunner to kill nezuko absolutely shocking and i really don't think i think an author can kill nezuko i don't think an author of of a popular manga that's being published in Shonen Jump can kill Nezuko. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I think if you're an independent author, kill your character, you're fine. I think if you have the level of, of millions and millions of dollars of outside investment into merchandising for your story, half of which is fucking Nezuko dolls and plushies and, and, and fuck pillows, let's be honest, you can't kill that character. You actually cannot do it. And so I should, have, I should have taken that into consideration. I still thought it was done. And so the credit here goes to manipulation of your audience. I said this earlier this week. Your goal as a director is to manipulate your audience. And if you can do it, you've done it. And if you can't do it, your art is going to fail. Kimetsu no Yaiba. Swordsmith's Village Arc episode 11 manipulated me, and I'm so grateful. It was so good. <laughs> it was so good. I'm definitely stunned by it. I'm, I'm definitely rocked by it. I felt, honestly, I felt like stopping the episode and sitting down for a while and coming back to it. But I didn't. Watched it all the way through, and it was great. And 
it deserves some additional credit. And the additional credit is that it didn't feel stupid. It didn't feel fucking stupid. A fake-out death is not an uncommon practice. Death fake-outs happen all the time, especially in anime where you can get away with it, because you can just sort of manifest whatever story you want to make it happen, right? Who cares? We just want the character back. But there are about a thousand ways to do this interaction that would have been shite. They would have been absolute garbo. And they would have been garbo because they wouldn't have been believable. And they would have felt like production concerns encroaching upon the needs of the story. The story needs Nezuko to die. She dies. That's what happens. And then the production committee goes, whoa, 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 whoa. She's too valuable. We can't kill her. Bring her back right away. And so we come up with some bullshit like, I don't know. Genya jumps over her and, and picks her up, or I actually thought maybe Kanroji would arrive in that moment and do something crazy to protect her, or something like that. None of that. None of that. Instead, it's something really interesting. It ends up being something really interesting, which is that the whole thing that we feared the entire time, the entire time, all this time, that we've had dramatic tension around keeping Nezuko in the box keeping her away from the sunlight, making sure that she's okay. If we just left her out in the sun and let it all burn away, let it go, we would have had her again. Right? To step out into the light of truth, something like that, and to let go of the fear, the fear of loss and the fear of falling apart. That's all that's necessary to shed the skin of the outside demon and reveal Nezuko as a person again. Partially, at least. That's fascinating. That's really cool because it's got rippling narrative impact on everything. On everything. On every demon, it colors every interaction. On every demon slayer that's interacted with Nezuko, it colors everything. On everyone who's believed in her and everyone who hasn't. And now she is something unique. Truly unique. What a fucking sequence. I think that the whole recap intro is pretty cool. The organs going are very intense. The lack of OP because we pull it to the end for the ED, very intense. Makes everything feel pretty intriguing. And definitely, I think this episode has the best pacing of any in the season. Tr truly. Tanjiro mad, everybody mad, everybody going, whooshy whoosh, flame on, can't do it. Okay, everybody together, all together, go. And we're through. Gonna skip most of this, but there are some key points that are worth talking about. We talked about Tanjiro's possibility of uh, incorporating other breathing styles. He's done water and he's done something sunfire thing, and now he does something very close to lightning or at least is capable of understanding the breathing techniques well enough to mimic and imitate some of the others. He's probably not as fast as any two. He probably never will be. But still, Tanjiro levels up here, includes thunder breathing into his abilities. And I think we do the, the visualization of it really well. The muscles look really cool as we tense up, and then these super slow-mo, super uh, uh, 30 FPS, like, on one's sequences as we spin around into bam really great it's one of the things that ufotable does so well is build up tension into something exploding into something springing into motion there's a really great example in heaven uh, fate stay night heaven's field 2 where bazaka like sets his feet in the ground under him like crouches and then he go bah! it's just tense 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 bam it's really good it's really good it's really great um it should be as common in animation, as well understood, and as well executed, frequently executed, as like squash and stretch. That's how, how potent this technique that Ufotable has, to my mind, like evolved. This is not their technique, it's something that's been done many, many times over many, many shows for many, many years, but they've evolved it. They've really put some effort into taking things from slow to accelerate, and it's fucking extraordinary. It's fucking extraordinary. And when you combine that with some of the 
there were some great conversations in the comments and on the Discord about the running animator for Ufotable, who's one of their primo animators, who animated a number of the Conroji cuts from last episode, where she's, like, sprinting through immense, like, whirlwinds of stuff with the sword trailing behind her and her eyes are all... And she's like a jet engine just going through, or like a, a motorcycle, a uh, speed bike, uh, all that stuff. You combine this sort of the moment of takeoff with that sort of the actual moments of travel, and then you build into that the whoever's doing the animation on the crazy impact fire sequences or the actual attack hitting sequences. So you combine 0 to 60 in 0 0.5 seconds, which is what we do here, extreme ability to generate and convey speed, and then impact... And you get all three together, and you get scenes like Rengoku versus Akaza with the big flaming dragon exploding into a big... Right? And that's actually what we're experiencing here, is this coagulation of three elements, at least, to make each of these explosive action sequences feel as incredible as it does. And it really does feel incredible. I think they're amazing. So, here, we get it here. Voop, 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 voop. Hold it, and... Explode, right? Bam! And suddenly we're in it, and we demonstrate speed... Straight through, we do it against the other characters, we whoosh in, I see you, we breathe, he lights up, Woo. and then that's, that's our bam, bam, like multi-cut impact, sell us on the thing, do it, do it, do it, I will, I will, and of course... It's not so easy, because things get a little bit crazy. Oh, don't you feel sorry for me? Man, such scary twists for Han Tango. He just doesn't stop, does he? The victim attitude at its worst. At its worst. Eh, do we want to talk about the allegory here? Nah, not really. It's, it's so simple. It makes so much sense, right? Have you met people like this? I've met people like this. It's never their fault. Not a thing. Not a thing. Everyone's out to get them. The world is hurting them. It's so mean. It's like every relationship they're in, the person they're in the relationship with, is trying to exploit them and hurt them and use them and be so mean. It's almost like they're the common denominator between all those relationships. And maybe they're projecting. <laughs> ah, the worst. Not at all. Don't you dare bully the weak. He says as he grows six feet in size, right? And starts crushing your skull. I'm weak! Don't bully me! <laughs> that feels... That feels like half the debates I see on the internet. <laughs> oh, the strong are bullying me. Hell, okay, so this is going to be a weird aside, but we're going to do it anyway. Two days ago, watched the Republican primary debate, okay? Throughout it, it's so interesting. Uh, uh, the Republican candidates all present themselves as underdogs. As underdogs. As being bullied. As being weak. They present themselves as though the Democrats are big money. <laughs> They're the big money. They've got all the funding. They've got the the historical support. They've got all these things. They're the, the big boys. We're the weak ones. And they're bullying us. They're bullying us with their progressive policies and increased taxes. Huh? And I'll bet, I'll bet you anything that when we get to the Democratic primary, they're all going to do the same damn thing. They're going to be like, those Republicans with all their Koch brothers funding and the oil money, they have all this money to throw at the political campaigns. They're bullying us. They're bullying us. <laughs> everybody playing victim to everybody else. And each of them uh, a multi-billion dollar behemoth of infrastructure. <laughs> And, and and institutions like don't bully me <laughs> ridiculous ridiculous but man we we love calling other people out for being bullies don't no bully no bully i'm so weak i don't hurt people i'm just weak it's like yoshikage kira the best example of this I don't want to cause problems for other people. I don't want to stand out. 
I don't want to cause anyone any issues. I'm not harmful. Just let me live my peaceful, quiet life where I murder people and take their hands and lick them because it's hot to me. That's totally normal, right? Leave me alone. Don't bully me. I'm super powerful. I have a stand that explodes people easily. No problem. I'm basically immortal. Can't be beaten. I'm doing great. Please, guys, why does everybody keep coming after me? It's like they have something against me. So weird. Amazing. It's amazing. It's really good. Hanpeg is great. <laughs> this is such, such, such a horrifying villain, because you don't even have to say anything. You don't, have to, you don't even have to call him out. You know, Daki and Gutro, you can point to them and be like, okay, I can see where they're coming from here. I, I get it. Hantengu, from human, from human, from when he was a human, was a psychopath. A genuine psychopath, pretending to be blind, killing people who got in his way, stealing continuously, blaming his hands for the thieving. Is that a biblical allegory? Like, there's, there's an old story about that. Like, yeah, I don't know. I think it's amazing. Everybody together. It does end up being everybody together. Big Blasto. Damn, man. Right. Right on. Tanjiro has no eardrums. In fact, he didn't have eardrums last episode, right? Yeah. Nezuko in. Thank God. Burning, burning. Thank God. Genya burning. Not good. But we do get Tanjiro out, and we're able to continue on going. But then they take a tumble. And here we are for the setting of the battle. Off a cliff into an open field, running away with a sword in his neck. Uh, uh, uh. Tanjiro down, Nezuko down, Genya down. Genya up, but down. And Tanjiro crushed against a tree, screaming at you. I'm gonna get you, motherfucker! Just you wait! Blood for the me! Yummy. And Tanjiro can't do it, doesn't have a sword. Does have a sword, what's up? The pass. It's a pass, right? It's a, it's a big pass. Pretty great. It's the assist. You gotta love a good assist. I like a good assist. And Haganazuka screaming. Very fun. And one more lightning breathing. I'm counting on you, Tanjiro. And everybody believes. We get this moment once more where we show the scene from the OP. It's everything passed back. Everyone all together. United as one. Same sword in hand. Tanjiro steps forward with everyone's hopes in his hand and bursts into another one of those sequences that we just have to we just have to point it out again, right? Okay, here we go again. We don't do the the one ones ones ones, but we do the the lean back, the pull, the pull, the pull. Ta 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 ta. Pow! What? That that looks like Nakamura. <laughs> so that looks like Nakamura's lightning. Just saying, that looks like you talking Nakamura lightning. It just does. Uh, it just does. Look at some of the um, final fights in in One Punch Man. This stuff looks like that. I don't know who actually animated this. It's not Nakamura. It's whoever does the fire things. That does look like Nakamura lightning, though. Whoosh! Oh, wow. That is a cool acceleration. Okay, so we do ones here. One, one, one. Yeah, right across and straight through. And then we're in it, in Tanjiro's perspective, cutting through it to pull in toward the boy. <gasps> rocketing through on ones takes the stance the fire all evaporates and then bursts forth again oh, clang whoosh and it starts to cut through like like it's melting it like it's turning to lava as it goes i think it's awesome <laughs> and in his reflected eye, Tanjiro, with the flames across his face and blood down his, down his cheeks, swipes through. And it's as victorious as it could be. We get the full double cut, dancing flash as expected, and it's not fucking over. Suddenly, and this is so good, stakes are still there. So he's running to Nezuko. And it... I wasn't thinking about it. Until this moment. Until the show leads me to the conclusion. To the like, oh, Nezuko, that's right! I wasn't Nezuko, that's right -ing. So, props to the show for managing to place those elements really effectively. That's part of the flow of the episode. Each beat that finishes, there is a next beat waiting to pick up right where it needs to. And it's really good. It's really good. 
And now our tension hits. He can't get there in time. It's too fast. And she's trying to tell him something else more important. What's more important? The ideal. The ideal. The duty. So now here you are. Caught. Between two. Places. And the glorious sunlight that should spell victory does not. Because instead, it threatens everything that matters. And she begins to burn. Ah! And turns away. And now Tanjiro's stuck. And we feel it every bit. We feel every bit of it. Because we've been here with Nezuko the whole time. We love her too. He can't protect her. And he can't protect them. He can't leave her, and he can't leave them. So we put Tanjiro against a real trolley problem. A real trolley problem. With the most interesting stakes. It's not just one person on one side and three people on the other. It's one person who you really care about, whose blood. <laughs> who is blood. And three people you don't know. But you've, you've given your word to protect them. Right? Okay, so now we're stuck. That's a true sticky. That's a true sticky. There's no out. There is no out. Mm -mm. No out at all. You can go utilitarian with it and just say, well, the three people are more than one person, but that's bullshit. We all know that that's bullshit, right? That's Nezuko. That's not a person. That's his sister. Even um, in uh, evolutionary biological terms, it doesn't make sense. You save the sister. Because those three people don't have as much of your shared genetic material as she does. But that's not how Tanjiro is thinking. Tanjiro is thinking, I am required to do this, and I am required to do this, and I cannot do either without sacrificing the other. And it really sells. There's no choice here. And if he was pushed to the limit, Tanjiro would sit there until she was dust. Unable to act, I really think. I don't think he can make this choice. I, I think narratively as a character, he's not allowed to make this choice. Can't do it. If he leaves Nezuko on his own volition, we cannot forgive him. If he leaves the, the others on his own volition, we cannot forgive them. If he sits there in shock, doesn't do anything, maybe we can't forgive that either. Amazing. Amazing. Huh. A, a true, a true catch-22. There's no out. There's no out except the one we choose. Nezuko pushes him off and makes the choice for him. She sees, and we see her see it. It's so, it's so good. We see her see it. Who am I kidding? I can't decide. I can't decide. I can't do it. I can't do it. Her eye opens. She looks up at him and sees his absolute tormented face, right? And she's, <gasps> This is the moment that she sees it. Yeah, right here. Looks up at him. She's burning, right? She's dying. She's in agony. He's hyperventilating. <gasps> she looks up and sees that. What she sees is, I am causing my brother turmoil. He can't do the thing that he needs to do because he's going to protect me instead. He looks down at her again. He can't. He can't. And he's off into the air. Choice made. Eye to eye. He flies away from her. And we use this moment. To focus in. Eyes. Eyes. Connection. Connection. And as the little tiny Nezuko burns away. She reaches and clutches at her chest. A little salute. What was in your heart? And without looking back. With all the memories. And it's amazing to see these memories. Because it's, it's shocking to see these characters from, from two seasons ago. They're so dramatically different looking, right? It's shocking. But to, to really recap and to show us exactly how far we've come. And how much we've gone through with these two. How many victories and almost defeats. She burns away. And he remembers her as she was. Lands. And is immediately with tears in his eyes and streaming behind him. 
not looking back. He's going to finish this. And he goes all dark, all scent, all focus. And it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Chop into chop. A little backstory and no forgiveness for you. Not even a little bit. And a victorious Tanjiro lays there. Distraught. Having lost everything, the camera wobbles toward us. Hinting, hinting. Until we reveal, standing in the sunlight, speaking with bright eyes, a living, breathing, something new that is Nezuko. And everything else in the episode sort of plays itself out. Conrad, you almost gets eight and ends up very happy. Muzan is very pleased. I thought he'd be displeased for losing some, some moons. I'm wrong. He's got exactly what he wants. So his farce breaks, and this is all very fun. Very fun terror. We get some real Muzan backstory. A strange medicine created by a strange doctor who he kills before it's finished converts him into a demon. Partly. And now, unable to recover the formula for the medicine, he has searched for thousands of years for the primary ingredients and has found something else, something different, something better. <sighs> Someone with the trait that he needs. So this whole time, he's been, quote, unwillingly spreading my kind. <laughs> he's not interested in them. This recolors all of Muzan's conversations with the other demons and why he's so damn pissed at them. He hates them, too. He hates everything. And everyone. They are only a means to an end to him, and he'd rather they were all gone so that he could live alone forever. Amazing. Amazing. And we get the idea that from a very early time... He was also a fucking monster. And one with power. How his family and Kaguya's family are related? How it all works together? I don't know. How the blood in the, the ingredients happened? I don't know. I don't know what the actual truth of the thing is, you know? And that's part of the glory of it. But Muzan sincerely enjoys his power. I think that this use of spot coloring is spectacular. All gray until he turns and reveals the blood all over him. Me? A monster? Wow. That's lovely. I've been seeking this the whole time. And now, finally, I have found what I was looking for. We get some goofy hug on Izuka that ends up being relatively good-natured. We get Kanroji hugging people and causing some exploding uh, uh, noses, which is reasonable because goddamn. Because goddamn. And some absolutely lovely reinteractions with everybody, some touching base, some solid celebration, and we're off into the wild blue yonder to see what happens next as we approach yet another arc, a future of Kimetsu no Yaiba with two less moons in it and Nezuko fully intact and indeed something new. What a shocking episode. What an interesting way to take the story. Looking back over the season, again, it's got the most low points of any season of Kimetsu. And I don't think that it has, like, the most high points to offset that. But the stuff that's there, the stuff that's there, and it's the vast majority of it, it's, it's colored a little bit by some, eh, some boring stuff and some mediocre comedy. But the writing of the, of the arc... The writing of the characters, the development of the side characters, Muichiro in particular, the movement of everything, the sort of flow of everything, the, the narrative weight of the ideals presented, challenged by the, the villains, effectively challenged, and then carried through, victorious, is exactly what I want to see about a story that at its core is an allegory of good versus evil. It's a story of... Actions against actions. The sorts of opinions and sorts of perspectives that you take shape your being. 
it says. The way that you interact with others shapes your world, it says. And some of the things that you do have repercussions that you can't possibly imagine. The things that Tanjiro does in the beginning of the season pay off at the end of the season. The things that Kotetsu does at the beginning pay off at the end. And the things that Muichiro does in relation to the things that Tanjiro does pay off for him and for Kotetsu and the whole village. And everybody survives because everybody helps everybody else. Tanjiro says it, and it's kind of weird in the circumstance because in reality he did kill the demon, right? He, it was him. He did swing the sword. But what he says is, no, no, it wasn't me. It was all of us coming together. And that's the core of it, isn't it? Even if it feels a little tropey, it is correct. And the arc is built to make that happen. If, if Tokido doesn't throw him the sword, if they don't finish that fight within minutes, within seconds, and get there, you know, of course we can contrive all of that because it's the narrative. It's like one author. And I made the joke when Kanroji gets nommed and then it pops, pops away. It's like, wow, convenient timing. Almost like it was written by the same author. No shit. That's fine. It doesn't matter. What matters is that there's some truth to what Tanjiro says, and the narrative doesn't feel like it does gymnastics, but it does go out of its way to ensure that that is the case, that everyone has a role to play. From Haganazuka honing the sword, to Kotetsu blowing the bubbles into, into the water, to Muichiro chucking the blade to him, to Kanroji holding everything off, to Nezuko getting, helping to get Tanjiro's head out of a vice. <laughs> uh, everyone has a part to play in here. And everyone's part that they play bolsters everyone else. And everyone else gets stronger because everyone is getting stronger. You know? Whether you have... Okay. What was the, the best thematic takeaway from the, from the whole thing? And it, it, it echoes through the Nezuko thing. Because what happens to Nezuko is that we... Not... Like really willing to, but not knowing what's going to happen, we step into the unknown, and we are changed. We don't know where we're going. We don't know what we're working toward. But we have a little bit of faith. And it works out. Maybe we don't even have faith. I didn't have faith. But it worked out. Didn't it? That element of the episode, when Tanjiro pops up to Kotetsu up in the tree and he says, you might not be able to see where you're going with this, but you should keep going with it. You might not know what path is there for you, but you shouldn't stop moving forward. That's potent, and it ripples through Muichiro, it ripples through Kanroji, who doesn't know where her romance is going and still has faith, and it echoes through this last element where... The scariest thing in the world, fear and loss, ends up being the doorway to a new future. Interesting. We'll have to see when they produce the next season of Kimetsu no Yaiba, which I have no doubt that they will do, what happens next in this little piece of story. Thank you so much for joining me for this season. I hope you've enjoyed it half as much as I have and enjoyed the reactions and discussions as they've come. I hope you've taken something good from this, uh, from this arc, and I hope to catch you next time when we watch more Kimetsu, or next week when we start polling, or I guess it'll be when this one airs on the YouTube, then I'll start, I don't know. There will be a poll up on Patreon for replacing this show on Fridays. There will be some very popular shows on that poll. You may have an inference to what I mean. You may not, I don't know. But there will be some very popular shows on that poll. Come check it out, come cast your vote, and we'll see where the channel goes from here. I don't know what's coming! But I do have a little bit of faith. Much love. I'll see you around. Go slay some demons. Peace.